Our community farm project began as a vision about two years ago. Um, when the folks arrived from Burundi, when they were resettled into Atlanta, they go through quite an extensive resettlement process. And part of that is um, interviewing, and, and they're asked about what they picture themselves doing here. And one after another said, farmer, farmer, farmer. They come from a very agrarian culture, and so this, um, doing this type of work really is important for them, and it's something that they know how to do. It's a skill that they brought here with them, and they wanted to be able to use that. Um, and of course, they are also interested in producing food that is familiar to them, um, that their families are used to eating, and that they can use that as a way to maintain their culture in this country. Refugee Family Services is a nonprofit refugee resettlement agency, and our mission is mainly to work with women and children to promote education and self sufficiency through economic opportunity. Um, and as a part of that, we are, we are looking at this project not only as a way for the women to um, carry on their culture in this country, but eventually we hope for it to be a self-sustaining operation and for the women to be able to earn some supplemental income through their work here. And that is something that they never let us forget and that they're very interested in doing. Um, and so eventually, as you heard them in our conversation earlier, every week we, we sit down and we have the back and forth and the women say, um, what they would like to do and what they would like to plant and again and again it's well when are we going to get more land that this is too small they and the women have told me that um, this field that you see behind us would in Burundi um, belong to two families we have 20 families working out here and so they are very concerned that it is not enough but there's um, it's it's amazing how difficult it was to find this piece of land to begin with. It took us almost two years to find somebody who was willing to let us use their land um, for growing vegetables. And in two years' time, it's been interesting because the local food community in the metro Atlanta area is really growing. Um, and it's, it's been around for a while, but it seems to be taken off. And all of a sudden, it's become a trendy thing to do, which was surprising. It was surprising for us. It wasn't something we were going for because we, we started talking about this so long ago. And then once it all came about, it was all of a sudden we were, we were doing something trendy and we didn't, we didn't know it. There's, there's a lot of ways. Um, if you want to come out here and get your hands dirty, that's always an option. We can always use some more hands, especially during the week. The women work um, about 60 to 70 hours during the week, um, and they have to care for their families. So it's even a big commitment for them to come out on a Saturday to work here. So during the week, we could use a lot of help. Um, we could always use tools and supplies and seeds. Um, the grant we have that we, we work from is um, a grant for education. It pays for no tools. It pays for no seeds pays for no farm supplies, for hoses, for gloves, things like that. And the biggest number one thing is that if you have land, if you know of land, if you have a big backyard that you want somebody to come and grow vegetables in, um, if you are connected with any developers who have unused land, I know there's a whole lot of it out there, you can drive around and see plenty of vacant lots that are that can be cultivated and we will we use all organic methods and we will leave the land in better condition than we found it.